Making your own bias tape has an advantage over purchasing a package of pre-made bias tape. You have more options for getting the color you want, and you can also use any quilter's cotton so you can have bias tape with a pretty design or pattern. I'll show you how to make bias tape using the continuous bias technique. You'll need some quilter's fabric. For this demonstration, I'll be using a standard fat quarter and all-purpose thread. You'll also need your sewing machine, rotary cutter, mat, ruler, scissors, straight pins, fabric marker, iron, and bias tape maker. First, your fabric will need to be a perfect square. So if you need to trim an edge, do so using your rotary cutter and mat. Then cut the fabric in half from corner to corner. Now bring two opposite straight edges together, right side to right side, and pin. You'll notice on each side, I have the tips of the edges going past the sides about a quarter of an inch. Sew this edge at your sewing machine with a standard straight stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. When you're finished, press the seam open. Placing it right side up and you should have a shape that looks like this. You can buy bias tape makers at your fabric store for different size bias tapes. So you'll want to reference your package on how wide they recommend cutting your strips. Mine is for making half inch extra wide double folded bias tape and they recommend I cut my strips two inches in width. So now on my fabric, I'll use my ruler and fabric marker and make lines along the long edge going up my fabric two inches apart. If you have any leftover fabric that doesn't fit in your measurement parameters when you get to the other side, simply trim it off. Now bring your two diagonal fabric edges together. These two diagonal edges are eventually going to be pinned together, but we need to do some prep first. You'll see my lines go across pretty evenly. They need to be offset by one. So all these lines here need to be shifted and all these lines need to be shifted in this direction. So I'm going to hold this side and I'm just going to pull this edge. So this line is eventually going to meet with this edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. You don't need to pay attention to what's going on here because this is eventually going to come together and these edges are going to be pinned. The main thing you want to focus on is that now these lines are sort of meeting up and everything has been shifted. This is that same diagonal edge pinned right sides together. And if you notice your lines on the top half, it is going in this direction. On the back half, it's going in the opposite direction. So they're going in two different directions. It's fine though, you just want them to make sure they intersect at the seam allowance line, which in this case, it's a quarter of an inch. So with my sewing gauge, I measure down a quarter of an inch, I put in a pin just to hold it, and then I open it up to the inside, the right side, here's my line on the other side and here's my line on this top side. And as long as they're making a single line, then you should be fine if you sew that quarter inch mark. So just as another example, if you were able to see my lines through one layer of fabric, I have one line going this direction, the fabric on the back, the line is going in the opposite direction. I put a pin at the quarter inch and then I can look inside and see if it's matching up and see right where my pin is, they're intersecting. On the end, of course, my fabric is hanging off here and you just kind of want to do the same thing. Now I have an image here, so it's hard to see my line, but my line is right here and it's intersecting at the quarter inch mark of the edge of my fabric. So as long as you have that, then you should be fine to sew it at your sewing machine. Once this edge is pinned, sew another quarter inch seam at your sewing machine and press the new seam open. Starting at the top line, cut along the line with your fabric scissors. This should be a continuous line going all the way down and you'll end up with one long strip. Now that we have a strip, we can use our bias tape maker. Make sure you have your iron heating up to a cotton setting, which should be a high heat. With the strip wrong side up, place it in the wider end of the bias tape maker and out the narrow end. You'll notice it'll start to fold over on itself. Start pressing the fabric coming out of the bias tape maker with your iron. It might be tricky to get it started, but it'll get easier once it begins. Continue to pull the bias tape maker along the strip and iron. You'll end up with single folded bias tape like this. If you want double folded bias tape, fold it in half and iron again. With a fat quarter like mine, you'll end up with about four yards of bias tape. Bias tape is typically made with 100% cotton fabric because you need a fabric that can handle a high enough heat to hold the crease. But luckily there are a lot of fabric options out there and now you never have to settle using boring bias tape again. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 
please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of our new releases. Also check out ProfessorPinkCushion.com to view our complete library with well over 450 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can join our YouTube membership and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.